we all know that uh, when I use any biomass, whether it is leaves or whether it is cow dung or anything, any biomass, any biomass, if you leave it as a heap, biomass in the sense which I tell us, which is a balanced biomass, having 30 to 1. If I, if I have it as a heap, then heat will generate in it. This is a well-known fact to everybody who handles biomass. You leave cow dung as a heap, there will be heat generating inside it. You leave biomass leaves and other things as a heap, you leave uh, hay as a heap, you will find that there is heat inside it. So if there is a heat inside it and if I put earthworms into it directly, what will happen? The earthworms will die. So the first process of vermicomposting is to pre-digest it. That is, I, am able, I should be able to compose the material, remove the heat from it and then we introduce the earthworms into it. So that is the first stage and this first stage can be done by any way. You can either have farmyard manure and convert it into vermicompost or you can have cold cow dung which has been left for about six months or so, three months of three, four, five, depending on whether it has lost its heat, depending on the quantity and then you introduce the worms into it or start preparing bio dung. Bio dung is a type of composting which is aerobic composting. Now how do I prepare bio dung? That is the next question. Let us go step by step now. First what we do is, we take some twigs, you know twigs from the trees, these branches, which are all tuned together, all twined, not very straight branches. <coughs> now these branches, we put it on the floor. You have a doubt? Dimension? Yes. The dimension, the length can be any length, any convenient length, whichever you feel is okay. The width, 4 to 5 feet. <coughs> the height, 4 to 5 feet. This is what we are going to design. But see to it that the minimum length should be 6 feet. I will tell you the reason later. Minimum length should be 6 feet. With 5 feet, height will go to 5 feet. Length, minimum length should be 6 feet. With 4 to 5 feet. And height will be building up to 4 to 5 feet. At the base for about... Uh, 6 to 8 inches, put these twigs, zigzag. Why do you need twigs? Yes, that is a good question again. Because we need air to enter into it. For air to enter into it, I need some space at the base. That is the reason I give the twigs. Now, once the twigs are ready, on top of it, you can put some palm leaf or coconut leaf so that it forms a sort of a barrier to maintain the biomass. Now, take some green leaves which you have harvested scatter it on it. Very simple, just scatter it. And one simple question I must ask you. You have all the biomass with you. Now I have to ask you one simple question. This is a paper. This has a surface area. You see, you have the area, you have the surface area. If I shred it up or cut it into pieces, have I increased the surface area or decreased the surface area? Increased or decreased? Which one? I have increased the surface area. Because when I tear, there are extra corners which have come up. So the surface area is increased, which means it helps in the composting process. One more simple question. If I want to cook eggplant, brinjal, katrika, baigan, then where will it get cooked? Quickly, if I put the whole one or if I cut into pieces, cut into pieces. So when I cut into pieces, surface area increases, so cooking becomes easier. In the same way, if you have biomass, it is better to shred it into pieces before you put it into the composting unit. So the first layer we have put, how much? About 8 to 10 inches we have put. Roughly, please do not use a scale. Yes, roughly. 8 to 10 inches or even 1 foot. And then the problem starts. Now, I have to add what? Microorganisms into it. What is the easiest to source of microorganism? Best to source of microorganism? There may be so many advertisements. You buy this, you buy that. Don't need to buy anything. Cow dung diluted in water. Cow dung diluted in water, just take it up and sprinkle it. Sir, I don't have cow. I don't have dung. I can't get cow dung into my place. Is there an alternative? 
Yes, there is an alternative. Very sour curd. You leave the curd for about 4-5 days, it will become yellow on the top. It has streptococci bacteria, lactobacilli, all the microorganisms are there. Take it, dilute it and sprinkle it. Or one of the best thing is, supposing at home or in your own farm, you buy a lot of, uh, you have a lot of fruits. For example, you have banana, you have papaya and you had bought it, but you have not used it. It is overripe, overripe and I don't feel like eating. Don't throw it. Take a plastic bottle with a wide mouth. Please do not use a glass bottle. So take a plastic bottle with a wide mouth. Take these fruits. Supposing banana and papaya. Banana is about 125 grams. Papaya is 125 grams. So totally 250 grams. Put this 250 grams. Mash it up. Add 250 grams of jaggery. You know jaggery. Good. Well done. You just mix it up. Squash it up. Right? That's a beautiful fruit salad is ready now. Add about 2 liters of water. Finished. Close the bottle. Shake it well. Leave it. Every day morning take it, shake it, keep it. You will find that after about uh, 8 to 10 days, the bottle will start bloating up. That is because of fermentation. Gas is produced. If gas is produced, slowly open the lid. Allow the gas to go out. Close the lid. Don't keep it open. If you keep it open, flies will come and lay their eggs and you will get those white, white, white maggots and you will not like it. So keep it closed. In about 20-25 days, daily morning you are shaking it. 20-25 days, open it and smell it. You can smell alcohol. That means the whole fermentation process is over. Take this solution, dilute in water, sprinkle it. It has all the microorganisms. Clear? So sprinkle it, spray it. And then you put the second layer, spray it, third layer, spray it. Sir, you said four feet, five feet, you already put four feet, then you say spray it, put it, spray it, put it. Yes. When you are adding it loosely, you should not press by hand. You add it loosely. But when we keep on adding these nutrients, you will find that it gets slowly, little by little compact, not very heavy compact. And you may have to add six or seven times. Now the whole unit is ready. How is the whole unit? 6 feet long, 5 feet wide, 5 feet height. Of course, it will get a sort of a shape so that it stands in position. If you have a possibility, you can loosely cover it with a plastic cloth. You got my point? Loosely cover it with a plastic cloth. For example, if I call this as a plastic cloth, loosely cover it like this. Now why should I cover it? Because I told you, biomass, when it undergoes decomposition, produces heat. So when it produces a lot of heat inside, what will happen to the water inside? Water will evaporate. And this water has no place to escape. So where will the water be? On the inside of the sheet. So the unit doesn't get dried up. It's inside the sheet. When the surrounding gets cold, the water condenses. And the same water goes back inside. So when water moves on, microorganisms move on. And in about three to five weeks, three, sorry, three to five days, three to five days, the temperature increases. And this temperature can go to almost 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. You got my point? 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. Very good. Sir, should I use a thermometer to check? Please don't do that mistake. Especially, most of the labs have this mercury thermometer. So, if you want to measure temperature, if you are really serious to do some temperature measurement also, do not use the mercury thermometer. Because in case you are going to put it in the pile, and because there are sticks inside, the mercury may break, the mercury may leak, and the whole compost will be contaminated by heavy metal. Alternatively, there are probe thermometers available. Probe thermometer has a metal stick. You can insert the metal stick inside, measure the temperature. Sir, I want to do it for my farm. Should I require a thermometer? No, take a stick. Just take a stick, a big stick, about, you know, like for example, about uh, three, uh, two feet or two and a half feet length. Poke the stick into the pile, into the middle of the pile. And leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Pull up the stick. 
fill it with your hand if it is hot your pile is mm. if it is cold your pile is mm. you will have to redo the pile clear very simple test and this temperature is very important for me why is this temperature important this temperature is important because unwanted microorganisms pathogens they will get killed unwanted insects and their eggs will get killed unwanted seeds will get killed you now for example you have a rose garden i am giving the compost and my compost if you use and you start getting a lot of weeds over there will you like it no no that's the reason why this temperature destroys it fine does the entire unit get compost destroyed no because the temperature in the core in the center of the compost unit is very high whereas the temperature on the outer unit is still not reach that temperature so i must turn over so what i do is i turn over as you see in the picture as i turn over steam comes out lots of steam even this you can use steam comes out and i keep turning over slowly in such a way that the outside material now goes in the core and the inside material comes on the top you got my point because the inside material already has reached the temperature so outside material goes in the core and so the inside material comes on the top and as i do it because the volume is already reduced i wouldn't be able to get 6 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet so what i get now is 4 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet so if you start with 4 feet you will not have enough biomass that's the reason minimum i tell you is 6 by 4 by 4 so when you turn over it becomes 4 by 4 by 4 and now leave it for another about 15 20 days if possible you can turn over once more or you don't do it after about 30 to 40 days just open it up cool it sieve it with a broad sieve give it to the worms and this is the meal for the earthworms to eat the earthworms eat it and produce compost and this is vermi compost is it clear fine sir but people say that i have to sieve the vermi compost is it necessary not necessary if you want to use the vermi compost you don't need to sieve it at all but if you want to market it if you want to sell it in the market it should look beautiful right to look beautiful use a sand sieve which is about 2 mm or 2.5 mm sieve sieve it and then you have vermi compost this vermi compost can be done sir i want to do it at home should i have such a big unit not necessary we get back to you with some small packages which everyone can do